Hey you guys, John Brett here. Hey, I thought I would try my lights and my microphone and stuff and see if I can do a better job of doing these videos, a little more detail. Um, what I considered was, as I was putting my tiles away from this workshop, was that I could probably show you some information from these tiles uh, that's accessible by just grouping them certain ways. So normally I would do a base and do 10 colorants, um, but one time I did a workshop and the, they just set the tiles up and did everything beforehand. And when they set them up, they set them up by color. And it was very nice, but it's hard to explain stuff uh, when you split the bases up. So I thought I would do it this way. And what this does is it shows you the range of color that you can get from just one colorant. And in this case, it's 3.5% copper carb in every one. And then what the deal is, is that you are getting um, the base causing the colors. Uh, so now give me a little leeway on, maybe it wasn't perfect, but I did try to do it pretty good for uh, the amount of copper, but it was pretty close. Anyway, you see the range, it's gigantic. So l let's try to analyze this a little bit. Uh, any of these recipes you want, you could just Google them, and then they'll probably come up, like here's milk gloss, probably come up in glazy, and there's PV liner. So those are our two right here. Uh, what these are is very high boron. So they have 0.75 and 0.65 in the unity molecular method uh, of boron, which is very large. Anytime you're over 0.3, it's huge. Uh, but you can see some things that are sort of iconic to these types of glazes. See this milkiness in there when it pools. And also sometimes you, if you overdo it, you'll get sometimes gassing off. But that, of course, could be fixed by our firing too. Uh, all right, so the next main one, I'm going to skip these right here because they're oddballs. Uh, these are um, barium and strontium. So you can see how bright those are. Super bright. This is classic barium matte. See how it, uh, it has this uh, white streaky lines. And then what I did was I just subbed one to one with uh, strontium for you to show the difference. And then this one is Pinel strontium matte, also called um, weathered bronze. Uh, but that has some titanium, I think five titanium, so that's why it's more opaque and looks a little different. All right, so those are magnesium, I'm sorry, those are strontium and barium mats. Now we'll go to, I guess we'll go to magnesium mats because they're right here. And you can see the different tone of green here. Uh, these are super high in magnesium because that's a, that's a lichen glaze. And then you can actually see, hopefully, you can see the way, let's see if we can do it like this. You can see how bubbly it is. That's from copper car bubbling off and because it's so stiff, it never heals over. But that shows you how gases are coming out of the glaze itself. And this one is uh, very high in um, magnesium also, but it's also got a bunch of boron to help it melt, and that's why down here it's like it, it crawled up and then it fused back. Okay, so that one's called brain crawl. Um, and then over here are some VC mats. Val loved uh, magnesium or dolomite. Here's mastering cone six. Uh, and then the, this is John's transparent that has a bunch of magnesium in it and so does Randy's red base. Okay, and then here is a calcium. This is the main uh, high calcium, low alumina and silica, which is what make an ash glaze. And then this one also has, it's a slip based ash and so it has 
uh, Red Art, I believe, or Alberta, one or the other, to give you the iron color. So that's not quite as indicative of um, copper, you know. Okay, these are matte glazes. These are a one to five ratio of alumina to silica, and they're, they're pretty high alumina. This one didn't get coated too well, but you got the basic idea. And then these are the straight up good glossy bases. I plotted them on an alumina silica chart. So you can do this. This is limits for Ron Roy and John Hesselberth, and you can see a bunch of them are in here. The, uh, the matte glazes are, would be up here. Uh, the ash glazes down here, etc. But you can do that on your own. Um, what do we got here? We got Odyssey, which has got a very nice glaze. It's got a medium amount of boron. Floating Blue has a lot of boron and sodium. Uh, four part clear. The main thing with that one is it has. Uh, spodumene for half of the feldspar so you get some lithium there and this is one of the seltzer uh, bases that's very high in sodium so these give you really nice Arebe colors and then here is a, this is called Temaku Gold which is basically a cone 10 glaze they just put a bunch of uh, lithium in to bring it down uh, and here's John's simple. I made this with mainly Frit 3124, very easy glaze. And the one main thing about this one is it's Fisk Celadon. It um, is a high zinc glaze. And so I think that's why the color is shifting a little there. Um, let's see, what else did we, did we skip any? No, oh, we skipped a couple up here. These are, this is called Wild Rose Base. And Wild Rose is a weird glaze. It's got 10 lithium and 10 bone ash. So it's a very odd thing. Uh, sometimes it shivers real bad too. So I just put it in there to show people. Uh, and then this is the VC Matte. And the main thing about this, it has six titanium. So that's why it's uh, getting some crystals in the back here. And um, uh, it's not the same as just straight copper. Anyway, I hope that's good for you. I just wanted to show you the wide range of colors you get from the same amount of copper. All right. Make... 10,000 of those and we'll see you tomorrow and if you like this video let me know and I'll do one I have a one with chrome and chrome and tin and a bunch of other colorants that we use all right take care